Mr. Transformers 96 here with another video review. This time we have the Marvel Legends from the Thor Ragnarok wave, Hela. This was by far my most anticipated figure of the wave, and I'm very happy to find it. If you're wondering, I did actually find this on retail. I went to Walgreens and was able to find the entire series. They not only had the entire Ragnarok series, but they had the entire Defender series as well. Uh, so I was very excited about that. Awesome artwork of the character on the side there. That looks wonderful. And on the back you get a great image of the figure, and then the full assortment. Although I did find them all, I only bought two of them. I bought Hela because I'm super excited for her, and then I bought Ares because he was the other rare one of the uh, series. These four, um, I am looking forward to getting, but I'm not like in desperate need of, and uh, you know, I definitely can get them on a discount. I always try to do that. When the wave comes out, I get the, the figures that I'm really excited for, so Hela in this case, and then the rare figures that I think I could have a problem getting uh, in the future, in this case being Ares, and then the other ones I, uh, I get on a discount so that I don't don't pay full retail for the entire wave. That's how I do it. But overall, the build a figure is Gladiator Hulk. Definitely excited for that build a figure, and I will be buying the wave, of course, to complete him. So let's get on to the actual figure here, being Hela. Now I am super stoked for Hela in this new movie. I think that she looks like a fantastic villain, especially with that new Comic Con trailer that uh, really spotlighted her in a lot of ways. So uh, I just I can't I couldn't be any more excited for this character in the movie. Um, but going over the actual figure here, I thought that when the production images came out of it, it looked tremendous, and I was very uh, interested to see how it would look in person. And in person, I have to say, it looks just as good. I'm very impressed with this. Going over the face sculpt here, she comes with two, but uh, going over this one, which is her uh, mast head, I think that it looks very nice. I do like the face sculpt, particularly from the sides. You can get a bit of Kate Blanchett in there uh, when you can see that the, uh, when you really get a good look at the lines on the cheekbones, which is very Kate Blanchett like. So when you can get a good look at that, it does kind of resemble the actress. The whole headdress uh, helmet piece looks wonderful. I was very worried about that. I thought that, you know, a lot of times Hasbro has trouble with um, uh, softer plastics. So I was worried that the this headpiece would be a softer plastic and therefore it would be warped in package. And that's really not the case. These two top sections are the only things that are a bit soft. Other than that, it's all pretty hard uh, plastic, which is wonderful. So it allows it to be completely even. I mean, look at that. That's wonderful. I really didn't expect that. I totally thought that the uh, the head piece was going to be an issue as far as them being kind of bent out of shape. But that is not an issue in the slightest. Her eyes having no pupils is interesting. Um, I don't think I've seen that in the trailers yet. Of any image I've seen with her with the headdress, her, she still has pupils. So I would imagine that at some point in this movie, she'll do something, she'll use some magic or something, then her uh, her eyes will just go completely white. Um, but I really haven't seen that, so it is a bit jarring to see it here. However, it still looks cool, but I, uh, I do hope and assume that it is accurate. The coloring is awesome as well. Um, you have the kind of black under piece there, which is has a bunch of uh, sculpted texture so that it looks like it's fabric. I love that really nicely done and then all of the armor or just the the plating on her uh, on her skin tight um, rubber costume is then uh, all sculpted none of it's just painted which is great and it's a uh, it's it's got a great color too it's like a metallic olive green uh, kind of dark olive green really wonderful I absolutely love the coloring here I think that it works perfect and it's all painted very well like even with this little line work all of the green is within the lines there None, none of it's like spilling out, which is great. Then her feet do look pretty good. Her cape is very nice as well. It's a completely new piece. Not much going on as far as texturing is concerned, but it does have some nice um, uh, line it, lines in it, like it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like it is like a cloth material almost. And then the armor at the top there. You have these two little smudges. It's a very small thing, but that is, uh, you know, rather noticeable when you are looking at it from the back. And then the way that this plugs on, you can take it off, and uh, I believe that she, she doesn't always use the um, the cape. I think that there are some shots of her where she doesn't have the cape on, so you can remove that. And as you can see, it's just one peg here, one peg here, and then when you pick that on, you just kind of want to put these over her shoulders. Uh, so make sure that they're not kind of smashed back. It would be cool if they had like a specific place that they can go and kind of like lock into or something. But overall, it is still uh, it is still good and it does work nicely. Uh, her hand, she has one hand that's meant for holding her accessory, being this uh, sword. The sword is very unique in its design, and then it has excellent texture. 
really a lot going on there, which is very cool. And then this hand, of course, is more opened. One, her, her front finger there is posed down a bit so that there is a little bit of expression there, which is very nice. I think that this is a uh, is a pretty nice hand as far as ex the expression is concerned. You know, you can you can do some good poses with that, which is very cool. Before I talk about her secondary head sculpt, let's go over the articulation. Articulation is quite nice. She's got a ball jointed head on a hinge, so she can look up even with this whole headpiece that far, and she can look down completely as well, which is wonderful. Obviously side to side, and you can tilt it. She's got ball hinge shoulders. Even with the kind of armor pieces sculpted, it kind of goes under her uh, her torso, so it doesn't hinder it whatsoever, which is very nice. She has hinge swivel elbows. She has hinge swivel wrists. On this side, it hinges uh, in and out, and on this side, it goes uh, up and down, which I do definitely love. I love when a figure that comes with a sword can do that so that she can kind of be pointing the sword forward. I think that is wonderful that they did include that. She has a ball jointed upper torso. Uh, which doesn't have the best range. It does go side to side pretty far, but it just doesn't go front and back far at all. And then, of course, it does swivel. You have ball jointed thighs, which have pretty good range, forward and to the sides. She has swivel at the thigh, double hinge knees, which work completely. And then she has hinge, pivoting ankles. There's the range on the hinge there, and then the pivot does work very nicely as well. And she's she's a very stable figure, even with the cape on, she doesn't feel outweighed, and the cape is the perfect uh, uh, length, so that, you know, she can, it, it doesn't lean her forward, and it's also not pulling her down, so it works very nicely in that regard. She does obviously come with that secondary head sculpt, being the uh, unhelmeted, unmasked version, which is here. Obviously it's just on a ball joint, so you can just pop it off and throw this one on. I have to say, I do like this head sculpt quite a bit. She does have like her veins popping on her forehead, which is very cool. When she like tells him, you know, uh, uh, what are you the god of again, you know, in that trailer, she does kind of have those veins popping in that scene. So we've seen it in the movie, and therefore I'm glad that it's reflected onto the figure. But it does look very cool. I love the way that the hair is sculpted. It's all, it's, it's got so much movement to it and it's got layers to it. It's like, uh, usually that doesn't happen when they do this head sculpt. Usually it's just, the hair is all attached here. But as you can see at the top, the hair is actually like coming off, which is very neat. I like that a lot. It does look like it's like two pieces, but I love the way that it's flowing. And then her expression is very nice. And it does rather resemble Cape Blanchette, oh, especially with this unmasked version. I think that it resembles her even more. So that is very cool. Uh, overall, I would say this is a pretty excellent figure. I really don't have uh, any issues with it, like at all. I'm um, just doing some comparisons here. Let's see here. All right, comparing her to Loki, who is rumored to be her son. Um, in the comics, it's the other way around. Hela's uh, Loki's daughter, but in this movie, it looks like they might be going the route of Hela being Loki's mom. So we'll have to see if that's true. She is quite a bit taller than him, though. Uh, I don't know like how good of a scale that is if she should be this tall. Um, but she's a rather tall figure. Comparing her to another MCU villain of uh, 2017, we have her with Ego. Again, she like towers over Ego. That looks really strange, to be honest. Uh, so that's interesting. And then, if the rumors are true that she is going to be taking the place of Death in the MCU, having her here with Thanos is fitting. And uh, obviously, this is a comic Thanos, but she's, she's not that much uh, shorter than Thanos is. So it's interesting how large this figure is. I would imagine that it is somewhat in scale, or at least it should be in scale with the um, uh, Thor from this wave. Uh, but overall, it does look quite nice. So there you go, that's my video review of the Thor Ragnarok Hela figure. Uh, this is a pretty great figure. As far as the sculpting is concerned, the accessories, and the articulation, there's really nothing wrong with it. I'd say that its weakest point is the articulation because there's really nothing too special as far as the articulation is concerned. It's pretty standard Marvel Legends, but that's pretty great anyway, so I, uh, I really don't see anything wrong with the articulation. But the sculpting... It, and the sculpting and the accessories are the best part of this figure because she nails both of them. The sculpt work is wonderful and she comes with everything that you could want uh, the Hella figure to come with. I'm really trying to think of other accessories that she could come with and uh, other than like a posed cape or something, you know, crazy and unnecessary like that, I really can't think of anything else that uh, this figure can come with. And I am very surprised and pleased that Hella was included in this series. Uh, I definitely wasn't expecting it, but of course I had my fingers crossed that it would be the case. So I'm very 
excited to get the rest of the figures in this wave, particularly um, Thor and Loki. I think that they are going to be great. And I do, of course, have the Ares figure, so expect a review of him soon. And there you go. So that's my video review on the Marvel Legends Thor Ragnarok Hella figure. Let me know what you guys think of this figure, and thanks so much for watching.